Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to our episode two of our tech tutorials that we have for Linspire. Okay, and um, what you guys are seeing here is Linspire 8.0 maintenance release one. As you can see, the GUI may be slightly different than the one you're using if you're using just Linspire 8. Well, we did tweak it a little bit, and um, what we're going to do is go ahead and go over a PowerShell for you today. And PowerShell is a command line interpreter that's available from Microsoft. It is an open source project. And uh, I'll go ahead and give the link in the description box below for PowerShell and uh, where you can find it and where you can get it in case you're interested. Now, Linspire 8 has this already pre installed Linspire community service, Linspire community server, excuse me, Linspire embedded desktop and Linspire Enterprise Server already has PowerShell pre-installed for you guys. Okay. Now PowerShell is used mostly in Microsoft products. Okay. They're used in it's used in Microsoft SQL Server, it's used in Windows Azure, it's used in Windows 10, it's used in Windows Server. Okay. And right now it is the default in Windows Server and in Windows 10. Even though cmd.exe is still provided PowerShell is pretty much the default. Now it's a very powerful scripting environment. We're not going to get into to all the internals of PowerShell. This is just an introdu introduction and a short tutorial. Okay. Now the cool thing with PowerShell on Linux is that you can use a combination of both your Linux commands and your PowerShell commands to get the job done. This is good for people who are coming over from Windows or coming over from the Microsoft side of the world who run into Linux or who use our products and that they can continue to interoperate and use the utilities that they're more comfortable with. Okay, so first of all, let's get started. How do you open PowerShell? Well, as, as you can see, this is the Bash screen, and uh, Bash is the default in Linspire. It will continue to be the default in Linspire. Uh, we, while we do, we, while we are the only major Linux distributor to provide PowerShell by default out of the box, it still will be used in the background and bash will continue to be the default shell so let's go ahead and start that pwsh is what you're going to want to run for powershell and that's pretty much what it uh, is abbreviated to all right so as you can see powershell 6.2.0 copyright microsoft corporation all rights reserved and it has the uh docs and you can type help to get help and everything but you can tell where you're at spe specifically by this as you can see in bash we have the username and the system name in powershell you have ps followed by the directory that you're in right now so how do i change the directory for example if you want to go ahead and go into uh, let's say your desktop folder, for example. Now you're in your desktop. Okay, and you can do an ls. You can go ahead and get your uh, directory listing that, or you can use your PowerShell commands. Get child item. And that will also list your entire directory as well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go back to our home directory here. And you can also use PowerShell to uh, update your system, to update your repositories, for example. So we can go ahead and do a sudo apt, oh, excuse me, not apt update. And it will reload all your repositories. I'm going to provide my password for this system since this is my working system. And as you can see, it's completed. It's reading the package list. And you can actually go ahead and update your system. All packages are up to date on this one. Um, so yeah, you can go ahead and update your system. You can do anything that you can do from the Linux command line, you can do it down here as well. For example, let's say we want to edit a text file. So let you do sudo nano slash etc. We'll go ahead and do release. 
okay and as you can see nano comes up all right you can also do the most popular unix command which is top which gives you a system readout and everything you can go ahead and do that as well all right you can also use the powershell command to get your pro your running processes such as get And as you can see, it lists all the processes that are on the system. Okay, so what if you want to kill something? Okay, now you you may be familiar with kill. Okay, in PowerShell, it's stop process. Okay, but we're going to show you the combination of the two, how you can use it. So we're going to go ahead and get process, which is a which is a PowerShell command. Okay, as you can see, Dolphin here, you have your CPU usage, memory usage, and this one's important, the ID number. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and now kill Dolphin so that it stops working on your system. Okay, so, and we're going to use a Linux command for that. Kill 16964. And then, bam, it's done. And as you can see from our taskbar, it did close. And so now if you get a process... Get process dolphin. As you can see, it no longer pops up. It's closed. It's killed. Okay. Now, people coming over from Microsoft Windows they use PowerShell on a regular basis or use PowerShell on a regular basis on Windows Server may be familiar with how to get the commands. Okay. They may have a book with all the commands. Now the problem being is that in Linux to get the commands is very simple. You can just go ahead and get because not all the commands on Windows are available on Linux. So you can go ahead and do this and that gives you all the list of the applets or commandlets that are available. Okay. Now one thing about PowerShell for those of you tech types in PowerShell, everything is what's called an object. All right. In Linux, it's basically a text file. All right. But everything in here is an object, and they're called commandlets. Okay. But you just saw that command list roll down, and you're like, "Oh my God, I can't read that. How am I supposed to make heads or tails of all that?" Well, what you can do is we're going to go ahead and use another combination of a PowerShell command and redirect it into a Linux readable text file. So what you're going to do is get command. Now you're going to pipe it into a text file and we're going to go ahead and do a ps slash com okay dot txt and that's going to list all the PowerShell commands and now remember right here where I talk about your directory this is where the file is, sa is saved so you're going to go ahead and do nano you know, ps slash or dash com. And if you press tab, right now it will actually complete that for you. And then when you hit enter, it'll open up a nano. And as you can see, all the commands there are available. And you can scroll down and find the one that you need. All the commandlets are available there. So you're going to go ahead and exit out of that. Very good. Okay. And, uh, but PowerShell has some very powerful command applets. Like I said, you can go ahead and, uh, or commandlets, and you can get pretty much anything you want done from PowerShell in Linux. And that's very helpful if you are coming from a Windows environment or Windows Server environment where you're more comfortable with PowerShell than you are with Unix or Linux. So let's go ahead and uh, do some other things in here. If you want to find out what you're running, you can go ahead and do that. Get host, and that will also show up. If you want to figure out what the list of your drives or file systems on your systems are, you can go ahead and get ES yes, drive. 
and then that lists your main file system, aliases, environments, function, and variables. Okay. And actually, if you look here, your current location is also available here as well. And uh, like I said, all your Linux commands are available. Date gives you your date, your time, everything else. Um, what if you want to read into a file? Okay, you want to see what that file has said. Does cat work? Yes, cat works just fine. So yes, all of your Linux commands do work. And you're going to find that they work very, very, very well. Okay? And also your manual pages for Linux. Some people are like, ask me all the time. One of the things we get asked a lot, do our man commands still work? Yes, they do. And I'm going to show that to you guys here in just a second. Alright, so what we're going to do is go ahead and... Oh, I didn't want to do top, but if let's say you have a Unix command on here that you need to look up, that you need to find the commands for, what we have in Linspire 8 maintenance release one is we've got DWN as an alternative window manager. So let's say you want to go ahead and look at the alter, look at the window manager. All right, what you can do at the commands for it, what you can do is go ahead and type in man, which in in, in you can replace DWM with whatever command you want. DWM, see, you got a list of all the commands that you can do. And you can go ahead and scroll down and read the whole thing. You can hit Q and quit. Or if, let's say, you want to do man echo, the echo command is in there. Okay, so manuals do work in here. And get command and get help do work within PowerShell. So let's go ahead and show you guys an example of that. I'm going to hit Q, uh, get help. See, so get help does work as well. All right, guys. Well, I hope this is now. Now, how would you exit PowerShell to get back to Bash? If you're a Linux user and you just want to play with PowerShell, you just want to figure out what it's all about and you want to get back to bash well if you, when you close your command window when you bring it back up the default will actually be bash so you wouldn't have to do that but in case you don't want to close your window you can always type exit and you're back in bash alright guys well I want to thank everybody for watching if you have any questions comments you can go ahead and uh, email us at support at pc-opensystems.com or you can email me directly at rjdohnert at pc-opensystems.com we'll be glad to answer any questions for you or any comments that you have we'll be glad to answer them or you know take them into account so I want to thank everybody for watching have a great day and uh, for those of you wondering Linspire 8 maintenance release one will be released in June of this year of 2019 alright thank you very much and have a great great day